contact and non-contact forces. I am pushing this toy car with my hand. While here, I am moving it with the help of magnet. Is there anything different between these two movements? Now let us look at another example. I am lifting these paper pieces with my hand. I am lifting these paper pieces with the comb after rubbing it with my hair. Can you tell what was the difference between these two movements? Moving of car and lifting of paper involved touching of hand to the actual object being moved. In other instances, magnet was used to move the car. We know that similar poles of magnet repel each other. Small magnet attached to the car and magnet in hand repelled each other. And charge comb was used to lift the paper pieces. The rubbing of comb with your hair resulted in accumulation of electrons on the comb. These electrons have charges associated with it. They are not moving. They are static. Hence, it is called as electrostatic force. As you know, external force is required for an object to move. In the example we just saw, there were two types of forces, contact forces and non-contact forces. When force is applied by touching the object, it is called contact force. When force is applied without touching the object, it is called non-contact force. Can you tell what force is causing this fruit to fall? Yes, it is our earth which is attracting towards it. It is gravitational force which is pulling it down. Is it contact or non-contact force? Take the help of your friends to find out. Now that we have learned about contact and non-contact forces, here are some examples for you to find out and categorize. Dog being pulled by owner. Football kicked in the air. Ball hit by the bat. Fridge door getting closed automatically. Soft drink can moved by a charged PVC pipe. Children engaged in the fight. Magnetic force, electrostatic force and gravitational force are non-contact forces. Muscular force is an example of contact force. Friction. Let me take this compost box and try to push it. It takes some effort to move it forward. What is preventing its movement? I am pushing. I am applying force. Direction of my force is towards your right. There must be some other force which is trying to oppose this. This force is called friction. When two objects in contact move relative to each other, there is a force which resists the movement. This force is called friction. Frictional force acts in a direction opposite to the movement. If movement is in this direction, then frictional force will be in this direction. Friction is often regarded as a bad force. Many times it reduces the efficiency of machines. It is however an essential force for things like nails, screw and matches. Without friction we could not walk, play a violin or pick up a glass of water. Let us place this compost box on the wooden platform. I will push this compost box with my finger to your right. It is not very easy to move. There is some resistance to the movement. I will tie thread to this compost box. I can pull the box with the thread. I will place some coins here. Weight of these coins can move the compost box. When I place 8 coins, box moves to your right. How can I reduce the friction between compost box and a platform? Think about it. Let us sprinkle some talcum powder on the surface. How many coins will be required to move the compost box now? Surface is smoother. Less coins are needed to move the same compost box. It required only 6 coins to move instead of 8 coins. If instead of this compost box, I use identical plastic box, do I need the same amount of coins to make it move? Let's try. Fewer coins were required to move the plastic box. The amount of the friction depends on the materials from which the two surfaces are made. Friction also produces heat. If you rub your hands together quickly, 
you will feel them get warmer if i rub my hands and then place the butter it melts quickly let me rub my hands like this this video is taken by normal camera instead of normal camera we can also capture this movement of hands with thermogram this camera captures various regions of heat on my hand very hot areas are indicated by yellow color and colder areas are indicated by violet color you can see the yellow region where heat is generated due to friction let us take this compost box let us slide it on a table by giving it a gentle tap now spray water on the table simulating a light shower of rain what happens now when you give the object the same size tap now add a few drops of vegetable oil on the surface of the water and give the same tap what happens now this is similar to a situation in the rainy seasons on the road roads are wet and there is an oil spill from the vehicles it is very dangerous to ride on these roads vehicle might skid and cause an accident when i place this duster on the table are all areas of the duster in contact with all areas of the table i mean 100% of it not really at very minute level or microscopic level it looks something like this only a small fraction of the total area is in contact it looks like mountains and valleys friction can be a useful force because it prevents our shoes slipping on the pavement when we walk and stops car tires skidding on the road find out more such instances around you where friction is considered useful balanced and unbalanced forces let me tie this thread to this duster when i lift it thread gets stretched weight of the duster is pulling it in a downward direction while tension in thread is pulling it up if mass of the duster is 100 grams how much force i am using to hold it back if mass of a duster is 100 grams its weight is approximately 1 newton that is mass multiplied by g acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 meter per second squared 100 grams equals to 0.1 kg weight is equal to m multiplied by g is equal to 0.1 multiplied by 9.8 which is approximately 1 newton if i take spring balance and measure the force it is 1 newton it is same as the weight of the duster we can say that tension in the thread and weight of the duster are equal in magnitude or value of the force but opposite in direction they are balanced forces if i put this wooden block inside water it floats it is floating because the weight of the block is balanced by upward force exerted by water this is called buoyant force which we will talk about later these two forces are balanced if i put some weight on the wooden block the forces won't be equal the forces will be unbalanced wooden block with added weight will sink as a result if i place this book on the wooden platform gravity pulls the book downwards wooden platform pushes the book upward as two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction book is said to be in equilibrium there are no other forces acting on the book book is at rest let me take this writing pad and put book on it if i lift one end of the writing pad slowly what will happen book will slide down the pad after some time when it reaches a particular angle with the ground why book did not slide immediately when i started lifting it it was friction which was preventing the book from sliding initially this force is unbalanced force and book changes its state of motion unbalanced forces causes acceleration it will eventually stop let me put matchbox on the pad will it slide at the same angle like the book how will you determine if force on an object are balanced or unbalanced first you should find the forces acting on the object along with their direction 
if two individual forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction then they are balanced forces if magnitude is different then forces are unbalanced we will take help of simulation there are three forces acting on the object gravity normal force and friction when the writing pad is lifted force due to gravity that is the weight of an object is applied in two directions one along the plane and another perpendicular to the plane as we increase the angle with the table weight part along the plane increases at one point it is more than the frictional force acting in the opposite direction the forces are now unbalanced object slides down the writing pad you must have played tug of war as long as the two sides apply equal force center of the rope remains at one location when applied forces are unequal the side with more force wins summary we discussed about two types of forces contact forces and non contact forces we also looked at the force due to friction find out more about the role of friction in everyday life